Hey everybody, Adam Savage and I am in one of my favorite places, Prop Store in Los Angeles with Brandon Allinger. Brandon, you guys, I mean, so many amazing pieces of iconic film history go through your hands. And this one is, is, this is from Batman, the original Michael Keaton, Tim Burton Batman. Yeah, which is a film that I love. So I love having this piece here. This one is not in any upcoming auction, but we do have some very exciting things that come through our hand from time to time. We've actually been helping out, working on some of the restoration of this piece. Um, and it is, like you say, from the first Batman, it is the quarter scale hero Batwing model. Quarter scale, quarter scale. Uh, it's gargantuan and it's so beautiful. Can you talk to me about some of the features? It, it, I really want to hear about the restoration process, but I'd love to hear about its features first because it's a shooting model. Yeah, no, it is a shooting model. We, we did a bunch of research actually. We talked to some of the folks in the UK, you know, Stephen Lane, Prop Store has a lot of ties to the UK filmmaking community. And so we were able to talk to Greg Morgan, who is the model maker in the UK who built this originally for Batman. Phenomenal. And it's it's really interesting. They did three different scales and it's all under the direction of Derek Meddings, who's the mm -hmm. famous British model maker who did all the Bond things and Superman the movie. And they did this scale, the largest for the detail shots with the functionality. They had one that was about two feet, which was basically for the crash shots. Mm -hmm. I think that one's MIA, no one knows where it is. And then I think they had a little one that was only about five inches large for the shot where it goes up in front of the moon in silhouettes. <gasps> and then and it pauses was, yes. before. <laughs> Great classic shot, right? That's awesome. But this one was large enough, had to be this large so they could get all the functionality into it. So each time I saw a high close-up in the film, this is the model You got it, it was. exactly, yeah. Anytime you're seeing close-up, and you can tell it doesn't move a lot in the frame. It's right. relatively static in the frame, and you never see the very back of it where it was mounted. So you start to pick up pretty quickly which one it is, but it, it has that functionality. And we just went through a big restoration process with it. Originally, it was all pneumatic, so it was all on these air controls. Oh, God, yeah, that's Obviously, a pain. yeah, didn't want to set up a compressor and such, so we converted yeah. it to mostly linear actuators and oh, nice. servos. So, can I take you on a tour? You want Please? to see some of the fun? Oh, you have a control box? There's a control box, yes. So this was, um, <laughs> the restoration work was all done by a model maker we work with named Jack Ajorian, who also worked on our Nostromo project. I that love that one. you'll remember from yeah. a few years ago. Uh, so Dude, I love the way you guys covered that whole project too. That was a lot of fun and you know, we still have it. It's a great piece. We love it. Sci-fi history. Uh, models are interesting because they're kind of like cars. Like time tends to take a toll on them and they can be rebuilt and reworked and reset like cars, right? Well, and yeah, you leave something that you've wired up for a few years and you don't know connections get lost. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I've had to repair stuff uh, from Star Wars for Lucasfilm yeah. while filming. And you're sometimes these pieces just deteriorate. You gotta keep them up. Yeah, well, let me show you some of the features here, some of the fun. Okay. So we'll start with the wing lights. Oh, nice. We got the wing lights there. Gorgeous. And then if I can direct your attention to Batman himself. No way. We've got a little bit of life there in his head. You can bleep that. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, so why is he missing his emblem? What's going on? Well, you know, the, the piece, <laughs> obviously time had taken some toll on it. And so the original emblem was missing, as was the cape. The cape is actually a replica, but it is the original little Batman figure. All the cockpit de detailing is original. Um, <sighs> And it, that was mostly intact, mostly well-preserved. Things like the missiles, the guns and such, those are original, but it had been repainted a number of times in its life. Uh. So most recently it's been repainted again to try to improve on prior repaint work and make it as close as it could be to the film. So we got together a big collection of reference images. That's so that, my question. How do you go about repaint? Mm -hmm. Like this thing probably was painted on set while it was being filmed as yes. well. It got a paint job, but then on set you change things. How do you decide on what's the hero finish? I mean, we just tried to go with the very best reference that we had. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we did collect some nice photos. We looked at the screen caps, but obviously film changes things, yeah. right? Yeah. Sometimes a lot. Especially so, in terms of the warmth and coolness of colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, on film, it reads very dark, very sort of black and blue. In reality, from what we can tell from the production movies, a little bit hotter, a little bit more silver in the finish like this. Really trying to replicate, I think, a real aircraft. Yeah. Um, and this is, am I correct, this is Anton First design? Yes, so there's a good story there too, actually, that we researched. Anton First, you're absolutely right, the production designer, but he didn't actually do the final design drawings. They were done by a guy named Julian Caldo, who's a UK concept artist, and Julian's quick to credit Anton First. Obviously, he was a production designer. He came up with a lot of the overall concepts, but right. Julian drew not over, not, not only the Batwing, Julian also drew the famous 1989 
Tim Burton Batmobile. Wow. And his drawing, Julian's drawing, is actually frequently published with Anton First's name on it. <laughs> but if you actually look at Anton First's drawings, they don't look anything like that. He has a totally different sort of gothic style. Well, and the, the, the parity between the Batmobile and this is total. Mm -hmm. But they feel like two pieces of equipment generated by the same mind, which totally makes sense. And for me, probably the best bat vehicles that were ever done. I mean, just that they sort of perfectly live in the comic book world, but also the real world. Yeah. And the Schumacher stuff, I think, went too crazy. I would agree. This is just the right blend. And the Dark Knight's a little too gritty for you? Just... I mean, I love Dark Knight too. I just picture it as a totally different thing. Sure, it's just, yeah. It's sort yeah. of, it's like a real world take on Batman as opposed to the comic book take. For okay, me, but so. we got off on painting and I think yeah. there's still some more There's more emotion. goodies. Yeah, there's more toys. I want so, to see it move. So how about, let's look at the missiles here. We can deploy the missiles. Oh, yeah. And in the film, they went to an insert shot of a larger model that was really detailed, but these little brass missiles do their, wow. their own oh, actuators. Oh, right, so they, they did work. a close-up. They went even larger for that scale yes. so you could see them clearly. Look at that, that's machined out of copper. Yeah, it's really, wow. a lot of work's gone into that. And then let me show you the Gatling gun on the side. Oh. <gasps> And once we get it deployed, we can fire that. <laughs> and then we can also <laughs> run the matching throws. No! Are you kidding me? Throws. And that's basically what you see on film. You see the Gatling gun spinning and you see the strobes going. Oh. And, and we set it up with real strobes again, just like that. I, I was wondering, I was like, are these Christmas lights? No, of course, <laughs> they're strobes. Uh, we've got the wing flap there that will... Oh, you nice, speed, right? The brakes, so, yeah. A good one. And then... Finally, if you remember the gag in the film where the balloon, uh, if I can get the box running, the clippers, <laughs> the clippers come out, and he basically grabs the balloons, oh my closes God. them, and then pulls the balloons back in, and there's also a saw. What? Oh, there, there it is. There it is. There's the saw. <laughs> <laughs> to work in conjunction with That is actually a milling machine saw. Yeah. Oh my God, And then he great. literally pulls the strings back and cuts them across that saw. Because you gotta be ready for cutting balloons in your bat wing. Oh my God. Now when you were a model maker, did you build a lot of models that had functionality in them for specific gags and films, or was that less common? Um, yeah, no, I don't think I ever worked on practical gags on ships. All the ships I built for Lucasfilm were static models. Mm -hmm. And before that, yeah, almost all static models. I've definitely done close-up insert shots, mm -hmm. but not on the model. So is, I mean, is it kind of a rarity, do you think, to have a model where they build this much functionality in? I, I, it often is, yeah. actually. The most functionality, the most aesthetic work I ever put into a model was for Space Cowboys. And that was, that shuttle, was crazy detailed and it's because Eastwood runs very cheap uh, on purpose. And so they, whereas normally you would make different ship parts for different insert shots, he wanted our one seven foot model oh, to see. supply every insert okay. that we needed. Yeah. So when he steps out into the airlock, that's a 12 inch wide model I built. Hmm. Uh, that's the only time, I would imagine that Tim Burton working on his first movie is doing some economies. Yes. So yeah. to put so much functionality into a single model speaks to, we didn't have the budget necessarily to do a separate machine gun for every single shot. Right, right, yeah. And, it, and it's interesting that the close-up shot in the film is this model. I mean, that gets blown up full frame Damn. on the movie screen, you know, the tight close-up. And it, I think it holds up pretty well. I mean, I think they did great practical work on this film, the, the Meddings crew, the British crew, and great designs, great models. I think it's an amazing thing. And it actually, it speaks to its design that it's still thrilling to look at, uh, what, 35 years later. Definitely, yeah. And it's, you know, to take the Batman, the shape of the emblem of yeah. the chest logo and convert it into an aircraft, it's just, it's sort of perfect. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot of fun having it here, doing some of the archeology span on it. You know, like I say, it had been resprayed a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And so when we got out the paint thinner, working with the model makers who were helping us fix it up, we were able to uncover in certain areas, the original <gasps> markings, which had been fully covered, but they were, <gasps> they were still there. And then we could trace them and recreate them exactly wow. as they were, so. I mean, every prop is different, but I'm, I'm curious about like, as you, every prop requires its own amount of research, its own kind of dive into what is correct, but I'm, I'm curious about how much this will inform your future restorations. 
the, the kind of economies that you make? Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, it's it's all about this term sympathetic restoration. It's right. like you want it to look like it did on film, but you don't want to go too far and make it look brand new. So we tried to keep as much originality as this as we could. Unfortunately, it had been resprayed and that necessitated a further respray. Sure. It would have been great if it was never touched. If it was never touched and the paint was just battered, then I would have said, leave it, leave you know, it, yeah. it doesn't need anything. But in this case, it made more sense to do a fresh paint job that was as close as it could be to the original. And models are sort of akin to cars in that way. It's like, you can repaint it, it's still the original model. Obviously, we'd all love for it to have its original finish, but it doesn't, so this is as close as it can be, you know? It's a gorgeous restoration, Brandon. I really, I, thank you for giving me the deep dive. It is such a pretty model. Dudes, see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us here at Tested, one of the single best ways you can do it is through a Tested membership. Now there's a link below as to the various levels of Tested membership, but at the top level I want to explain, it's so much more than videos that are exclusive. There are Q and A's, there are live streams, there are some exclusive videos, but the thing I love most about the Tested membership is the interactivity, the constant and wonderful communication between the Tested members and not just me, but our entire team. Every day, it feels more and more like a beautiful community just devoted to the joys of making. So join up and become one of us, one of us, one of us.